Brothers and sisters, I want to begin with saying something important. So the tragedy that happened to me was now three and a half years ago, and it's amazing how time flies. My mother and I and our family are still frozen in time. That's how it is. That's how it feels when people lose loved ones. Depending on how valuable they were, the more frozen in time you become. There are some things when you have a loss that are very human to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places them in you. Don't be afraid of them. They're very normal for every human, Muslim or non-Muslim. Don't feel bad that if you cry a bit, that if you're sad, that the pain stays even for the rest of your life. That's a normal thing for a human being. And the reason why I opened up with that is because people think something's wrong with them when a tragedy happens. They usually come to me and ask, what can I do? When's this pain going to go? The honest truth is the pain doesn't go. The more you love someone, the more the pain stays. But is pain a bad thing, really? Our mindset tells us it's a ba bad thing. But pain is not necessarily a bad thing, brothers and sisters. This entire life is built on it. It's built on happiness, sadness. Some people will come into this life. Some people will leave. Some people before us. Some people after us. Then comes our time. But I'll tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are two things we are very sure about. Number one, not a single prick of a needle that a person goes through. Or a single bit of worry, a single bit of sadness, a single bit of fear. Not even anxiety, just even fear before you get to there. A little bit of worry, not even depression, before you even get there. Even a little bit of a word that someone hurt you with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't leave that out. He acknowledges it. That's the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu He said, even the prick of a needle, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensates them by forgiving of their past sins. Do you know what it means to forgive of our past sins? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He brings us back to the way we were, we were when we were born. And the only thing we have with us are our good deeds. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing us closer to Jannah. Because Jannah doesn't accept anybody with any sins upon them. You might be thinking, what if, how does that make sense? You see, brothers and sisters, even on the Day of Judgment, anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges us with, if there's still sins, He forgives them, He takes care of them, and until you enter paradise free, with no guilt, no regret, nothing. Brothers and sisters, pain is inevitable for everybody. Death is inevitable. Isn't that true? What, what is death to you? What is it? Let's understand something. Death is nothing but this. According to the Quran and our beliefs, death is merely going from one place to another place. From this world to another world. That's all it is. And when you go from this world to another world, your soul goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we say, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. To Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Those were the first words I said when my son passed away, rahmatullah alayhi, and upon all your loved ones. That's the first word I said two hours later when my brother passed away, rahmatullah alayhi, and your loved ones. And that brought serenity on top of the pain that I was going with. My mother, my father, my siblings, all of us, my children, his mother, everybody was in turmoil. But, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. What is sabr? Patience. Patience is to hold yourself together. It's not that you have to get rid of the feeling and the pain that you're going through. It's with the pain you hold yourself together from doing things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if you do, return back and repent and say, Oh Allah, forgive me. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where they said that what if a person went through pain and struggle and failed the first time and didn't say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. The scholars tell us from this hadith that even if you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, afterwards, months later, it'll still be counted for you. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ says that when Allah takes a loved one, especially for children, if He takes your children away, or any loved one, Allah says to the angels, how did you leave my servant? 
Like, did you take his soul? Did you take his loved one's soul? Did you take the heart of his, of, of his life? Did you take the thing that's most dear to him? So Allah Taala knows. He knows, brothers and sisters. He knows your pain. He knows your tears. He knows your, what you're feeling. He knows everything already. And since he knows, there is a plan, insha'Allah Ta'ala. Did you take his beloved one? And they say, yes, Ya Rabb, even though he knows. And then finally, Allah says, وَمَاذَا قَالَ abdi? What did my dear servant say? Allah is listening. He is with you. That's why he's asking this question, because he's acknowledging your pain. It's not like, I don't want to hear about it. No, Allah is saying, what did my, what did my servant say? He's making the whole angels witness. قَالُوا رَبَّنَا Our Lord and you know best. حَمِدَكَ وَاسْتَرْجَعَ <laughs> Your servant said, Alhamdulillah, gratitude to Allah in every way. وَاسْتَرْجَعَ Meaning they said, to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Do you know what that means? It means whether those people have passed away before you by a little bit, you're still going to follow anyway. Soon we're all going to meet each other again. It's only a small time, it's only a short time. Think about yourselves, how old you are right now. Think about the years that have passed. How quick were they? Ask your parents. How quick were they? Ask someone who's over 40, over 60. How quick were they? Like the blink of an eye. Today I do two marriages for young people who are my ex-students. I looked at them and said, Subhanallah, I still thought you were still 12 years old. Now they're 25, 26. Time flies, my brothers and sisters. Time flies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran about the state of the people when they are raised on the day of judgment. And they say, Qalu kam fil adada sinin. How many years do you think you were in the earth? Qalu labithna yawman aw ba'da yawman fas'alil adin. They will say to each other, Oh, it was a day or part of a day. Ask those who, have, who, who keep count, either the angels or the righteous people. Qalu illa bithtum illa qalila. You only stayed in this earth very, a very short time. This whole earth will, will seem like a, a speck of time in the end. And then you're united with your loved ones. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you something. What do you think is the strongest support for yourself when somebody passes away or any kind of grief that you go through? We have Muslims and non-Muslims around the world. We have experts on social media always telling us how to get through grief and whatever. Well, what separates a Muslim than the rest? Everybody can deal with it in some way or another. But what separates a Muslim? See, I thought about that. When my family passed away, a few months later, you heard about that Christian family in Sydney who had their family got run over. Their girls got run over on the footpath. They're a Christian Lebanese family. How did they get through it, even though they're not Muslim? And how am I going through it when I'm a Muslim? Aren't they supposed to be on the wrong path? <laughs> Not Muslim, following Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Anybody who has some belief or faith in something can hold on to it to a certain degree. And they're closer to the truth than other people because they believe in Allah. And they believe in Allah even though they've got shirk or whatever, but they're holding on to some belief. But they had to t have somebody to tell them, like the priest or the church or so on and so forth. And I assure you that their process is not the same as my process and your process. There's something for us that goes even further than that. There is something called yaqeen. Yaqeen means absolute assurity of what I'm believing and what I'm saying. And the backup that comes with it is not from the mouths of people, but from the Qur'an itself. Meaning... Where did I find my solace, do you think? The Qur'an. I found it in the Qur'an. I'll tell you why. When you believe in the hereafter, it makes everything else in this world suddenly appear from a new perspective. I wonder if you've studied about the hereafter enough to find yourself right now imagining yourself as if you're already standing on the day of judgment and looking at yourself. This is how I think. I thought of myself standing on the day of judgment and looking at myself backwards. What would I be thinking on that day? Right now I'm thinking the afterlife is somewhere far away and I wonder where they are and all that stuff and I'm thinking about the now. But if I were to die and I'm in the hereafter and then looking back at myself knowing that I will never go back and then I see in front of me paradise and hellfire, 
those who are going to paradise, those who are going to hellfire. I see my family, I see my children, I see my siblings, I see all these people. Where is the destination, brothers and sisters? Where's the destination? Does anyone know where the destination is? Is it here? Our belief in the hereafter suddenly tells us our destination is not here. Stay with me now. This is something very important. This is what helps me and what helped me till now, alhamdulillah. For a believer, where is your destination? Everybody's going somewhere. Your destination is in the hereafter. Is that not right? Our destination is paradise. Doesn't Allah tell us, tell us that is your destination? The people who find their destination here will not be able to cope as much as you. Will not. It's impossible. Not like you. Because you're thinking beyond this world. If you're on the Day of Judgment thinking at yourself backwards, you'll say, I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. SubhanAllah, just for a speck of time I spent it that way, for a speck of time I've gotten, I had no time. So right now, I'm too busy thinking about that, brothers and sisters. I'm already in the hereafter. And the moment that my son and brother passed away, I was more definitely in the hereafter. I was in another world. For two years, I couldn't see this world. I thought I'm in the hereafter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Qur'an puts you in the hereafter. Have you noticed when Allah talks about the hereafter, He doesn't talk in the future tense? What does He talk in? Present. Huh? The present or? the past. He even talks in the past tense. Meaning, don't worry about this world and everything. What you're going to do, it's, all, it's already in the past for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's already in the past. Everything's already in the past. So with my son and brother there on a journey at the moment, there was someone. Who are they with? They're with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They packed their baggage and they've just beaten us. And that's what happened when I visited their grave. I said, Antum as wa nahnu insha'Allahu bikum lahikun. That's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu used to say when he visited the graves. You, our brothers and sisters, have passed over to the destination before us. And we will follow. You, will, you and I, will we, will we not follow? Of course we will follow. My brothers and sisters, a short test is what we're going through at the moment. And insha'Allah will pass. And I have good news for you. If you are a person who has suffered from some kind of test in your life, anything it is, whatever it is, we're all sitting here with different tests, brothers and sisters. I'm not tested like some other people here. Other people are not tested like the way I'm tested. Every one of you has a different test to the other. And each one of you is enduring in a way different to the other. Am I not right? Some with wealth, some with death, some with health, some with divorce, some with uh, um, you know, uh, pain, some with whatever they're going through. Each one of us is tested with something. And I want to tell you why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at each and every one of us. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, When Allah sees a level of faith and iman or belief in a person, He gives them more tests than others because they can endure it. He said they can endure it. That's why he said, The ones who go through the most trials are the prophets. Then the ones like them and the ones like them. You'll be asking, what about people who are evil? Don't they go through tests? Don't the non-Muslims go through tests? Yes, they do. But you see, here's the thing. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the outcome. You as a believer will react to Allah's test differently. And Allah says, okay, let's see how you're going to react. Which way are you going to take it? It's in your power. But Allah gives it to you in a way that you can handle. As for the non-Muslim, they may react in a good way temporarily. But if they don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't know the hereafter, they haven't read the Qur'an. There's going to be something wrong with their reaction. It's going to be more temporary. And even if they pass it, in the hereafter there's nothing. That's if a person knew the truth, that is. My brothers and sisters, look. Let's come back, come back to what the Qur'an says. You are going from here to a destination. All that's happened, all that's happened, let's use my example, my son and brother, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just gave them a shortcut. He gave them a shortcut and made them skip waiting in this ugly world. He just took them back a little bit earlier. Well, that was their time, but to me, Instead of them living on, Allah just cut their journey short and now they're there. That's why Rasulullah said, you have beaten us and we will follow. And when I recite in the Qur'an, I find, we all find that in Surah Al-Kahf, 
about the story of the boy whom Musa alayhi salam and al-Khadr went on a journey and al-Khadr finds a little boy and he kills him. The boy did nothing, absolutely nothing, comes and kills him. And al-Khadr said to Musa, but wait, if you're going to learn from me, you are not allowed to ask me about a single question of what I do. Because Musa had said to him, can I follow you to learn from you? And he said to him, you won't be able to feel patient. You can't do it. No questions asked. He says, You are not going to be able to be patient. He said, You'll see me among the patient ones, inshallah. You know, he's Musa. He said, All right, if you follow me, you can't ask me a single question until I tell you what the interpretation of it is. He said, Okay. The first thing happened, he lost his patience. He said, I told you you can't. The second thing happened was killing the boy. He lost his patience. He says, Didn't I tell you? The third thing happened, he said, Okay, that's it. You and I are gone. But I'll tell you what it means. Even Musa Islam could not be patient with it. That's why Allah gave the knowledge to that man. He didn't give it to Musa salam. He gives each one to the proportion that they can handle. And if you can handle it, he raises you with it. It means he's chosen you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's very hard for people to think in that sense. A Muslim can. The Qur'an makes you able to, to think that way. A Muslim who reads the Qur'an and lives with the Qur'an can. That's why Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ajaban mu'min. Strange is the state of the believer. If good happens to him or her, they are grateful. And if bad happens to him or her, they are still patient. And nothing happens to a believer except they interpret it as good. Everything is good for a believer. We're always optimistic. We are never pessimistic. Ever, ever. Ever. I was never pessimistic. Wallahi, from even the... My son died right in front of my eyes. Nobody else saw it. My father was behind me. He fainted. I had to look at my father. He couldn't make it. He was with me. But I never was pessimistic. Wallahi, even from that day. All I said was, Ya Allah, even if he's paralyzed, bring him back. I'll look after him. I'm, I'm ready. And Allah, it's as if Allah said to me, no, you can't handle that. And you don't know what his future holds for him. You don't know what your brother's future holds for him. Allah knows. And I knew Allah knows. Musa and Al-Khadr, when he killed that boy, in the end he said to him, this young boy was going to grow up in the future to become a tyrant. And his parents are good people and they're righteous. And out of love for them, he took their son early before he can reach the point of giving them tyranny. And he replaced him for their parents with another child who would be, whom Allah knows will become a better righteous child. Because Allah doesn't make you righteous, you make yourself righteous. It's your choice. What is the result? The young boy hasn't done any sin. He went to paradise, insha'Allah. The new boy goes to paradise. The parents go to paradise. Guess where all they're, gonna, they're all going to end up? Together. Because Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah says, and those who believe in righteousness, and they have children who follow them on their footsteps of righteousness, we will reunite their children with their parents, and we will not bring whoever's upwards downwards. Do you know what that means? It means that if the parents ended up high, or the children ended up high, and the other ones don't deserve to be high, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift those who are down upwards for free. For free. Why? Because in paradise is all happiness and joy. How can it be joy without your family? But Allah says, however, you are all indebted or under a pledge to yourselves. So make sure you follow righteousness and Allah will do the rest. He'll honor you even more. So I have no problem, brothers and sisters. My son and brother just beat me to the destination. And after that, I read a lot about the hereafter and the grave and what the Quran says, and what the Prophet ﷺ says, maybe for a whole year, information I have never looked at before. And I shared it with my mother and father and children and siblings and family, all of them. That information helped me a lot. Because brothers and sisters, where, where, where are they now? They're in the hereafter. So the more I know about the hereafter, the more I'm connected with them. The more I am, because as a father, what am I thinking? I want to be there for him. I've still got that, I'm still in that uh, auto mode. I've got to protect him. I've got to, I've got to be there. Even my other brother, he was always reliant. Brother B used to call me. What's this and what's that? And I'd be there for him. 
and your loved ones. You were there for them in some way. So you want to kind of do something for them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu to say to us, I am at the positive way my servants thinks of me. Allah is only positive. Look at all of his 99 names. Those are the ones he revealed to us. Is there any negative name? You might be thinking, oh, but he says he's the harmer. <laughs> no. Allah says, the harmer, the benefiter, meaning he will not harm you, except out of the harm, a benefit will come. So he will not harm you unless there's a benefit. Uh, you might say, al-khafid uh, al-rafi' the demoter, the promoter. It means he will not demote you unless he wants to promote you. It means every door that closes, another door is going to open. But if you don't have that connection with Allah, with that same belief, then it's only a one-way thing. Doesn't Allah say, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ And if my servants ask you about me, I am always close. That's not a question to be asked. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ I will respond to the person who always and constantly calls upon me. Meaning, don't stop. Allah is the only one who does not like you to stop asking, talking to him, speaking to him, telling him about your worries, telling him about your pain. Allah loves it. Why? Because that connects you to him. Not because he wants to make you feel bad. No. Because, you know, if you want to have a good connection, relationship with your parents, the experts say, or with your children, ask them for advice. Talk to them about your feelings. And if they're reciprocating, suddenly you start to create memories with each other. Because what is a relationship? Relationship is memories. The more memories and the deeper they are, the stronger the relationship is. So with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I need to create memories with him. Subhana. He's there, but we have to connect him. Allah says, li. Let them respond to me. Bi, and let them put their trust in me in their heart. Meaning that we always question, we always have doubts. The shaitan comes to us, gives us waswas. We start asking, why did they go? But why? But why? But why? And that's when we're connected to this temporary world, we get these thoughts. So we need to read more about who Allah is and what the hereafter has in store for us. The more we learn about it, the more we feel at ease. Wallahi, ana, that's how I felt. The pain is still there, even till now as I'm standing in front of you. However, as time went on, it became easier for me to handle the pain. It never goes away and I don't want it to go away. I don't want it to go away because that's what connects me with my brother and son. Brothers and sisters, let me ask you something. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just leave us alone like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to you, what, yani, what can you remember of your loved ones that you can continue as an ongoing charity, an ongoing piece of knowledge? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said when a person passes away, all their actions are cut off except for three things. A righteous child they left behind who supplicates for them. An ongoing charity they left behind, or you leave a charity on behalf of them. Or an ongoing piece of knowledge they left behind. What did they teach you? Think about it. Think of your loved ones. What did they teach you in life that pleases Allah? Grab onto it and walk with it and teach it to others. It will be a spiral effect that continues from now and could be till the end of time. So the dead person who leaves behind good work or charity or righteous family, they're still living. If you want them to still live, but in a different way. You keep going. That's why we are called Khalifa. Khalifa means those who go away and those who replace and we continue. And for example, this word destination. My son made up that word. He called, I was going to camp with him one day, he was 12 years old, he says, Boba, the bridge of destiny. For me, that's personal. And I said, my son, this is your destiny. He said to me, I was born ready. Every time I say, was, this was the motto between him and I. Are you ready, Boba? I was born ready. He's ready. And I'm ready. My brother, what can I remember about him? Allah, I, these are the things that I benefit and they get rewarded for. It's as if I'm still with them. He said, Every time a day would pass, he used to say, Brother B, see this right here, see this right here, right here. I'm pointing at it. See this moment? Enjoy this moment. Don't think about tomorrow. We used to talk like that. And you know, I took it on board. Brothers and sisters, you can still take on board the good things that you learned from them and it's as if they're still living and going. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah puts an angel to that person and says when the person sees their ranks rising because somehow the soul in the hereafter in the world of the barzakh we call it the barrier world where the world of the souls the prophet peace be upon him says that they see their ranks rise 
And how do their ranks rise? One person will say, Ya Rabb, where did I get this from? And the angels will say, you have a righteous child making dua for you, or istighfar for you. Or you have a righteous person making dua or istighfar for you. They get to see it. They get to see it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His mercy has made a connection still between us and them, but in a different level, in a different way. Subhanallah. You know, brothers and sisters, the thing that helps you a lot, and it helped me, is also praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the nights when it's not fard prayer, when it's not compulsory prayer. You just go down and make sajda before you go to sleep. Out of your, but by yourself, no one around. And talk to Allah as if you are talking to a friend. Doesn't Allah know what's in your heart? Well then say it. Even though Allah knows it, don't ask the question, why should I tell it to him? He knows. No, 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 no. Allah is telling you, speak it so that you can feel it. So that you can feel your connection to me. It's all about you. And mark my words. If you've had a loved one who has passed away, it means that Allah chose you for this type of test because he knows. You can, you can pass through that test. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, Allah says, and we will surely put you through trials of different ways. Sometimes fear, a little bit of fear. Sometimes a bit of hunger for some people. Sometimes a bit of loss of wealth. Sometimes a loss of lives from around you. And sometimes a loss of fruit and vegetation for people who work in that field. Allah says, and give good news to those who are patient. Meaning the ones who hold, hold themselves together. The ones who when a calamity befalls them, they say, to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Allah says, these are the people whom Allah's blessings and mercy falls upon them. And these are the people who are rightly guided in life. Rightly guided in life. Because your guidance here connects to the guidance in the hereafter. Do you believe in the hereafter? If you believe in the hereafter, alhamdulillah, then connect yourself with it. If you don't believe in the hereafter, I advise you to go and read from the Quran. You know, brothers and sisters, I think majority of a lot of young people now, and I've seen I'm a teacher, you know that, many of them have abandoned the Quran. And then they ask, why can't I feel this? You've abandoned the Qur'an, brother and sister. The Qur'an on the Day of Judgment and the Prophets on the Day of Judgment will stand up and Muhammad وسلم, will come around and he'll say, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And the Messenger will say, Oh my Lord, my people took this Qur'an as an abandonment. Why? It's Allah's words from above the heavens to you to connect you to Him. Every day, 15 minutes, Connect yourself with the Qur'an, even if you don't understand the words, even if you mumble, even if it's hard for you. The Prophet ﷺ said, those who find it hard and they stutter with the Qur'an, they can't read the Arabic, they have double the reward. Double! Why double? Because Allah wants to encourage you to connect to Him through His words. Allah's words, you're talking to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, I found my solace in the Qur'an. You know, you can listen to music if you like. But music doesn't really do much. It only gives you two or three or four minutes of a bit of a euphoria. Some dopamine uh, is released. Some other neurotransmitters are released. They're just chemical reactions. And then when they're gone, you want to listen to it again. And again, and again. And finally, that's it. You want something new. Why? Because there's nothing beyond that. There's nothing in there that really connects you to any truth except just band-aid solution. And I tried it. Tried it when I was younger. No. I never listened to the music and thought, hmm, 
I feel like going to the masjid now. That inspired me. That inspired me, man. My salat, my dua, it no, never happened that way. Brothers and sisters, family and friends also help you. In the beginning, look, uh, finally I want to just say this. Brothers and sisters, look. Family and support is a little bit difficult at first because you're in so much pain and you have to go through, through five steps. Every human goes through them. First of all, it's a shock, a bit of a denial. I don't believe it. I don't believe this has happened. I went through it. I was in shock. My mother was in shock. She, she didn't know what's happening. She couldn't see anything anymore. The shock stays for a little while. Then you go into this thing of negotiation, like, uh, what can I do? What can I do for them? What can I do for them? What if I did this? Then I can do that. I went through negotiation. Ya Rabb, please, I'm not going to be able to have a shower until you show me my son in my dream. I want to see him in my dreams. I want to see my, my, my brother in my dreams. I'm not going to change my clothes. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to do anything until I see them. Negotiation. Hello, for me, this was subjective. I did see a beautiful dream and uh, for me that helped me. However, after that, you go through a bit of anger. But why? But why? I can't handle this anymore. And regret. If only I had done this. So I blamed myself a bit. That was the worst. Blaming myself. Because the first thing I said to my son when he passed away at that second, I said, Boba, please forgive me. I'm sorry. And that stayed for a while. But there came a moment through Salat and through reading the Qur'an and connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every night. Finally, I made a decision. I made a decision that I'm not going to blame myself anymore. I'm not going to think back because had I had the chance to turn back time, I would have not let him go on that, uh, on that, on that uh, um, activity. If I knew he was going to die, I wouldn't. So ask yourself the question, if you've lost a loved one, can you turn back time? If you could, and you knew they were going to die at that time, would you do something? Of course you would. That is evidence not to blame yourself, that you had absolutely no control. How many times have we subjected ourselves to danger? And we could have died a million times. And that's why Allah says in the Qur'an, وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Allah keeps away lots of harm from you. You have angels at the front. لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ You have angels that exchange roles, like in the day and the night. They, some come down, the other ones come up like a tag team. From in front of you, they protect you. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ And angels are behind you, and they do a tag team, day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ They protect you by the will of Allah. So there are so many dangers that would have come to you, but Allah subhanahu wa is protecting you. And then when the Qadr comes in, there is a reason for it. Hold on to it, brothers and sisters. If you know what Qadr is, that Allah subhanahu has pre-measured everything, and that nothing happens except it is good. Either Allah has a plan for you, or it is a test, or it is a, or suffering, suffering, or a good is going to come out of that suffering. Or if it's something that you did yourself that you can learn from. This is just learning curves. These usually happen when you're on an endeavor or something like that. You learn from your mistakes, and that's okay. Like a baby who learns how to walk every, each time it falls, it's just going to be able to walk. And just keep going, brothers and sisters. With that pain, you can be in rehab, you can be in the hospital, you can be in a mental institution if you like, and the pain won't go away. You can go on drugs and the drugs will numb it away, astaghfirullah, and it will make you worse. And if a person dies this way, Allahu A'lam where they will end up. Or you can have the pain with you and then decide, what are you going to do in this life? What can you do? Allah has given you skills. Allah has given you knowledge. Allah has given you um, many, many, many blessings around you, brothers and sisters. The fact that, and I'll finish it with this, the fact that you are breathing right now and the fact that you lived on right now means only one thing. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still has use for you in this world. There are others around you that need you. There is something in this world that requires your presence. That without your presence, it cannot happen. You are important. You have a purpose. So think of Allah that way. Ya Rabb, you've made me important. It's up to you. 
It's your mindset that's telling you stuff. It's all you. As for Allah, it says, I'm not negative. Think of me well, that's who I am. Ana arhamur rahimin. I am the most merciful. But you, you have to, you have to accept it and believe in what I'm telling you. My brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Heal your hearts. Heal your pain. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put your loved ones who have passed away into paradise and lift their and raise their ranks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us all with them once again. Ma'al illiyin with people of high righteousness and piety, with the angels and so on. Don't despair, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah is with you. So open your arms up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like my little daughter said, Baba, I want to hug Allah. I said, okay, pray. She goes, is this why we do this? I said, yes. <laughs> hug Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you for listening. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.